Good day, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the final episode in which we are going to be looking at security stuff. Okay, before we go any further, the product works right now, right? So we made a simple get request. We get accounts being created and, and you can retrieve the information that you want from it. That's cool, but it's not secure. And you don't have a reason not to secure it. Let me put it this way. If you are going to deal with sensitive information, if you're going to deal with uh, Discord token, or if you want to keep information in your database, such as the uh, user's email address, things like that, or even their password, you have a responsibility to make it as secure as possible. You have a secure, you have a um, responsibility to not store, for example, plain text password. You have a bunch of responsibility because you're taking the burden off carrying the information with you. Now, there is alternative um, to that. They're a little bit more complex. For example, you could log in with OAuth, meaning that you could log in with Google, with Discord, with Facebook, with other services like that, which... Um, is more secure because you don't keep the information. Well, you can decide to keep some, but you don't have to keep the information. Though this is not what we're doing. So it's a long intro, but what I wanted to say is that in this video, I'm going to go through a bunch of security flaws that I've observed while uh, making this, and we're going to fix them one at a time. And it's going to get more and more complicated as we go. So I invite you to look at the timestamp in the, uh, the YouTube bar, basically. And um, every time that you see a new chapter, basically, we're going to be tackling a new security issue. I'm going to go with uh, the the highest priority first. So things that are easy to fix and that will save you a lot of possible <laughs> leak, basically. So that's what the video is about today. I invite you to look at it. Um, maybe if you want to complete one chapter, then you come back tomorrow, complete another one, because the stuff I'm going to be talking about is a bit heavy. But if it's, it's going to be a video in which I talk a lot um, for the sole reason that we don't speak about security enough uh, when making Unity games. We speak about security all the time when we make <laughs> servers, when we make Node.js application. But uh, here on the channel, I don't expect that everybody knows about that. So, And I'm not an expert 100%, but I do know that we've made a lot of error and I'm going to go through and fix them. I do invite other people that are a little bit more savvy than me to... Uh, just pitch in yeah so in the comment section down below pitch in i'll pin your comment and uh, we'll have a look at that so without further ado let's begin cheers the first security flaw we're going to be tackling is our get request we're going to turn our get request into a post request um why do we do that because what we're going to be trying to do here is hide the sensitive information inside of the url so we're kind of exposing the username and the password right now, we're going to change that so they are part of the body of the request. So if you haven't already, I do invite you to open up a git bash or any other terminal, go inside of our backend folder. So for me, it was the login backend code dot to open it up in Visual Studio Code. And here we go. So inside of code dot, we're going to go under the authentication route. And here, oh, I changed it earlier, my bad. Uh, here, basically, it says application.get, we're going to change that to application.post. Now, just by doing this, our code is no longer going to work because on the Unity side, we create a, uh, we do a get request and this is expecting to see a post request. Therefore, it won't go anywhere. So what I'm going to do is now that we have the post here, that's all we really had to change over here for the moment, at least. We're going to go back inside of Unity, open up our login and here in our login script, there is the web request. The web request is, of course, a get, and we want to be changing that to post. Now, by changing this to post, the parameter no longer match. Uh, before, we only needed a URL. Now, we need a URL and also some sort of data, so post data. And also, here we have at the top, we have a long URL. We no longer have to do that, right? As we've mentioned, what we're trying to do with this security here, um, this security vulnerability, vulnerability, See, a tough mode um, is to hide that from the URL. So we're trying to hide sensitive information from the URL. Therefore, we're going to remove that and just keep the authentication endpoint. Remember, that's just the local host at our port slash account, which is the same exact thing on the other side. So here slash account. All right. Now for our second parameter, however, we're going to need to send in a string of information or 
a multi-form part section, or I believe there's also a easier one. Yeah, the www form. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare that. And I'll explain what it is in just a second. But let's make sure we create a new one. And a triple W form is basically the information that goes within a request, in the body of the request. And from that point, we can say, hey, in that form, let's go ahead and add a new field. One of them could be called our username. And the information is going to be username. Same thing down here for password. Our password. All right. Then we can go ahead, take the form, send it in as the second parameter. And now we should pretty much be done with this on the Unity side. However, things are not going to work anymore because we never really parse body information um, on the other side. So on the back end side over here, we don't really do anything with that, right? So when we do a console.log body, nothing actually gets outputted because we're missing one key part. And that key part is another NPM module called body parser. This is going to allow us to carry information within the body of the request and parse it um, as a middleware. So when we receive the request, automatically, this is going to be parsed and put inside of request.body, I believe. Yeah, so here it is. Now, do we know that this package is pretty safe? It's something that a lot of people look at. As you can see, 18 million downloads just this week. Uh, yeah, it's this one, I think we can say is pretty much safe. And to install it, of course, Inside of our folder, npm install dash dash save body parser. And when that is completed, we can now go back inside of our code over here and declare it at the top. So const body parser is equal to require body parser. Oh. And I believe that the code we need, um, since Unity sends us information in URL encoded format, let me pull up what I need. And this is what we need over here. So our express application is going to use a middleware that is going to make sure to parse the body of URL encoded string. So I'm going to go ahead, take this line of code and put it um, roughly at the top there. Why not? All right. So with this in mind, I am going to run my backend. So npm run dev and we're going to give it a try. Oh, we have an error. So what is the error? already in use. Okay, so this is not supposed to happen on your end. It happens on my end because I probably cleared the console too fast or somehow it got stuck there. So one thing you can do is open up the task manager, find the node JS and delete all of them. There I have another one. I have another one. And I have another one. Okay, should be good. Yeah, so I had six of them running for some reason. Uh, let's go ahead and run this now. npm run dev, and as you can see, it now works well. Let's go ahead and try this out. Invalid credentials. Let's see what goes on on this side. So object null, prototype, and then our username and our password. So the information got carried over. Um, and let's find out how and where I actually got carried over. So I'm going to go back on my authentication route. Over here, I do output the body. So that might be where um, we get that information. And I gave it one more try with the rec.body.r username. And it gave me my username right here. So basically, the information got carried over from query over to body. So I'm going to go ahead and change this over to body and now we didn't we uh, deconstruct our username and our password from request.body. With that in mind, let's try it again. And it says welcome username admin. So our code is now back on track. Now we're using a post request and the information is a little bit more hidden. Um, yeah, so that was the first security flaw to address. All right, our second big flaw was the fact that we did not have a create account. We had a single place in which you could create and also log into your account. That's very bad. That's extremely bad, actually. The only place where this could actually be le legit is if you were using only OAuth. So here at the top, you're going to see me change uh, the route account to account login. So this is going to be only for login from now on. 
I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this completely and just paste it beneath and change that to, of course, create. None in all caps, we're not that angry. And we're gonna go ahead and just strip some stuff from the top over here. So initially, when we log in, we first look, is there any of those? Um, do we have both the username and password? Okay, that's fine. Now here, we look for an account. We're gonna do a find one with the username. If we find an account, if we don't find an account here, we were to create one. In that case, we're not going to do that. And instead, we're going to say, if account is not equal to null. And we're going to keep that block over here. So if the account is not equal to null and the password is the same as the password of the account, then we're going to set the date and we're going to save and we're going to be retrieving the account. So that seems to be fine at the moment. So that seems to be just fine. Now let me quickly recap what's going on over here and why this is important. Here at the top, we have an invalid credential. We just say that in case uh, the username is null or the password is null. That's just, you know, that's normal. Now what happens over here is if there is no user account, then we go straight to invalid credential. Now if there is a user account, but the password doesn't match, we do not enter this if statement and we go straight to invalid credential. And that is what is important. So whether there is an account or there's no account, we go to the same error. We don't leak the information that maybe there's an account existing with this username. That is the important part. Because if a hacker tries to break in my account, well, initially he starts with no information. He doesn't know what my username is and he doesn't know what my password is. If at one point he just keeps trying username and we tell him, hey, you got a username, but you don't, you have the wrong password then he knows he hits a username and he knows there is an account associated for, uh, with that username. And from that point on, he can only look for password. So we want to avoid doing that. We want to avoid giving any information whatsoever about that. So our login is going to stay that way for the moment. And we're going to have a look at the create. Now for the create account, it's a little bit different um, because when you create your account, you have to check for collision. So for example, here we get a username, we get a password, but we still have to check for collision. So we can have, we're gonna have to look for, is there an account with that username? And if there is, we have to tell the person that, hey, we can't create an account with that username because it already exists. Um, there might be a way around this, uh, but you know, so at one point it's usability versus security. And if there was a way to avoid that, I would gladly do it. Uh, but I mean, even Google does that. So if you try to create a, a email address that was already created, it's gonna say it's existing. So what we did here at the top, this uh, security, well, I don't want to say protocol, but this this uh, thing that we've done here could be kind of worked around if you go inside of the create and you start looking for account through the create process. That's also possible. This is why usually you would also attach something like an email. And by doing that, the person would have to create a new email every time it, it tries to create a new account as well. Um, so that's one, that would be one of the way <laughs> to actually do it. So, but here we're going to have to look for collision. So let's go ahead and check username. Yep. Password. Yep. Okay. We're going to find an account. If the user account is equal to null, so there is no collision, then we're going to go ahead and create that account. Last authentication. Yeah. Save the account, send it back. But however, if there is an account, so in the else statement, we're going to say, uh, username collision username was already or is already taken so we're gonna say that instead and that should be it I believe let me double check now with those two post route uh, completed we are gonna go ahead and just change our unity because we need to change a couple of things here to make this work um, we're gonna need to create create a new um, piece of UI actually and that piece of UI is going to be just the create button down there. Yeah, we might just add a create button. If you are to do this a little bit more seriously, then you might as well just create a, um, you could create a whole new page for that uh, and, and just change what we see over here. But in my case, I'm going to do a create button just like so. Maybe give it a spacer in between them. A little bit smaller, maybe that and extend the size of my container 
just like so. Now I'm going to go inside of my login script and when I say try login instead of doing that of course I'll do try create. So let me go ahead duplicate that on create click creating account we are going to make the uh, create actually we're going to make both buttons not interactable so create button goes here duplicate that and since we're going to do that a couple of times might as well just create a helper function here called activate buttons and of course deactivate button or you know what let's just make it a boolean here so I'm gonna call it toggle and take this make it equal to toggle and here when we click on login we want to put them on false both of them same thing here so when create and the coroutine is going to be called try create. I'll copy this whole thing over. A lot of copying today, but hey, that's uh, that's what we need to do. So try create. Okay. So things need to change here a little bit. Uh, we first have the username and password in the login. That's totally totally fine. We have a small check over here, which is cool. We're gonna have to replicate that on the back end uh, in just a bit as well. We create a form, also good. Authentication endpoint has to change, however. I'm gonna call it um, login endpoint now, not authentication endpoint. I just think it's a little bit too big, I guess. And the link is gonna change to account slash login same thing for the create endpoint and let's have a look now um let's not debug that in the chat as long as we have a uh, we have a timeout over here we look if it's done okay if the result is a success we're gonna say login button interactable so activate the button put that on false and we're gonna say welcome that's totally fine. Now, if it's invalid, I'm going to say activate buttons to true. And same thing down here, activate buttons to true. All right. So that's good for the try login. Let's go inside of the try create. It's very much the exact same thing when you think about it. So invalid username, invalid password. Um, you might as well put it under the same function if you want to. In my case, I want to split them apart. So I'm just going to keep them as is, but let's see. So login button interactable is equal to false. Yep. So activate buttons, but actually, should I put that on false? No, I'm going to put them back on true if I create the account here. And I'm going to say the following account has been created something like that and we're, we might come back to that just in a bit later um, so same thing here uh, in fact we're gonna activate it no matter what so I'll just put it at the bottom over here and here we go so when we get oh here it says invalid credential if the login is a success we technically don't want that here so we're gonna have to change that um, in, in a future security flaw but what does it say when we're not able to create an account? So when we're not able to create the account, we say invalid credential or we say username is already taken. And I'm going to copy the username is already taken. And do know that what I'm about to do is, of course, some temporary measure. And I'm going to say, um, if the request null lender is not equal to invalid credential and the, of course, the request that download handler text is also not equal to username is already taken, then of course the account has been created. So let's try this out actually. I'm, I'm curious to see if it's gonna work on the first try. We're gonna run the server, the, the server is running, and we're gonna go ahead and just try to sign in with 123123, 1, 2, 3, login. And it says object reference, oh yeah, we haven't set our things, so <laughs> let's go ahead and do that. Um, oh, my login script over here doesn't have a create button, so let's give it the create button. And is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. Let's hit run. 
and we're going to go ahead, try to log in, and it says invalid credential. It said something else for a second. It says signing in. Okay, so signing in, then since we're on localhost, it's like instant, and we don't get to see the signing in part, but it says invalid credential. Okay, that's fine. Let's start to create a account with that. So one, two, three, one, two, three, create. Also invalid credentials. So what could go wrong over here? Oh, my button, my button is not set to the same thing. So I forgot about that. So here under create the button, I have to change it to login on create click. Okay. Um, same thing, one, two, three, one, two, three, login invalid, create. Account has been created. And now I'm gonna try and sign in with the same thing. Welcome, one, two, three. And I lock the button because technically at that point I am signed in. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to do that again. So one, two, three, one, two, three, create. And it says invalid credential. Hmm. So that's funny. I, that's not what I was expecting to see here. I was not expecting to see invalid credential. I was expecting to see username is already taken. So let's find out what is going on here. Oh, I see what the problem is. Actually, uh, it's me on the unity side. I was using this text over here instead. So instead of being, uh, instead of saying invalid credential, I'll say, username is already taken but at the same time it's not the good way to go for the sole purpose that i might be able to do that if um if i don't just if i don't input anything in the password for example so one two three invalid password okay yeah because of the client side checks then i still get to do that and for some reason create is is not working so a couple of things to look at actually so here hmm, i haven't changed the thing so let's do Activate buttons, put that on true. True here as well. And let's give this a try. Username is already taken. All right, so now that works, we can create another account, sign in with it. And we're pretty much good to go. So now we managed to split this apart. This was the second flaw that we wanted to address. Alright guys, brand new day, same shirt. Today we're going to be tackling one of the most important things that we have to tackle with our project right now, and that is to change the password that we have currently in the database. They're stored in plain text, we don't want plain text, we want to be hiding the password of everybody who allows us, or graces us with their password. So of course, we no longer want to keep that in plain text, so if I go ahead of course, the data we keep right now is not secure. As you can see, if somebody gets a hold of this database, he can find my password, which is right here. Plain text can enter that and can go straight to my admin account. Now, what we're about to do is a little bit complex. So let me just quickly um, go through it with you here. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a hashing algorithm that is considered a one way algorithm, which means you're going to take your plain text data and you're going to encrypt it. Or you're going to hash it in such a way that you won't know what the source is. So in that case, my password was 12345. I'm going to take 12345, hash it in a one direction, um, in a single direction hashing. And we're going to end up with a big string. And that string, there is no way to know that it's, uh, that 12345 is the string. So it's, it's called a one way thing. So, uh, you hide what is the seed, basically. Um, and we are going to, on top of that, we're going to be adding a salt for every single account. I'll go through it as we go. Um, one other thing that I want to do is bring up one of my piece of code that I'm using for the backend for my ML API game. And actually, let's see. We're using Aragon over here and also Crypto, which are two packages um, that are going to help us in this case. I believe Aragon was, is going to be the hashing algorithm. This one is a very important one. This one is the award-winning algorithm right now, the one that is in lead. So we're no longer using MD5. We're not using SHA-256. We're going to be using Aragon, and Crypto is going to be to generate ourselves a salt, basically. Um, that sounds complicated. Don't worry. We're going to go through it uh, step by step. The first thing I'll do is bring up the... Where is it exactly? the Aragon package over here, and we're going to install it. So npm install Aragon to FFI. So going here on my backend, I'm going to say npm install Aragon to FFI dash dash save. Now, one thing you're going to notice when you install this is that it might not work. And if it doesn't work, it's because you need to run this with node jip 
that is something you don't have um, if you have the same setup as I did. I actually don't have that. Sorry about that. That was my phone. So one thing you can do to fix that is go under Visual Studio and actually modify the install of Visual Studio. I don't remember exactly how to do that. So here I have the Visual Studio installer. If you can boot the Visual Studio installer, I'll show you exactly what you need. So you're going to modify your current installer. Go under desktop development with C++ and here under the desktop development with C++ you're going to go down this list and you're going to check in the Windows 10 SDK so um, this is going to contain what you need for the node git build and eventually it's going to be done and here we go so we have the package now crypto is actually built in in node so we don't need to actually um, add this one this one is already part of the package and I'm going to go ahead and go under our authentication route and declare them at the top. So I'm going to be using both Argon and also Crypto. Now with these two package install, I'm going to go down to the create function. And just before I do something here with the accounts, or should I do it after? Yeah, so never mind. I'm going to do it inside here. So when we decide to create a new account, I'm going to go ahead and in between that, I'm going to paste in a bit of code that I have on the other side. So here it says generate a unit access token. Things is a bit different on my other project. So here, instead of the token C, this is going to be my password. I don't want that. A game token, I don't have that either. But we want to keep track of the salt because we'll be saving the salt in the database. So I'm going to declare a variable called account salt. What is going to come out of that is a unique salt for every single account. And I'll be saving this one in the database. So it's very important we keep it there. And then once we're done, we're going to hash the password. So here, hash the password with the salt and the, um, how can we call it? The hashed password is going to be right here. So let's go ahead and also declare that up here. Oh, let's just say it's null actually. Same thing here at the top. Okay, let's go quickly through that again. We want two values out of this. We want the salt and also we want a hashed password. To create the salt, we do random bytes with crypto, which is generating us a byte array size of 32. With that um, unique salt, basically, well, it doesn't have to be unique. We save it so we can save that with the account inside the database. And then we hash the current password we have with the new salt. And then we end up with a hashed password. With that in mind, we can now change the password over here to hashed password and we're going to create a new field for salt and that's going to be the account salt. Once you create a new field, of course, you're going to need to go back under account and say salt is type of string. That should be all we need over here. Let's give it a look. I, I really want you to have a look at this basically. So if I am to go inside of my game and run the server npm run dev oh before we go any further here i have an error um i actually hashed a password that's not what we have we have a r password in this case so let's just make sure that there is no more issues with that yep we should be good to go all right now we're going to be doing two tests very important we do two tests and what i want to do is uh test the same password so this account is going to be created a123 and the password is going to be one, two, three, four, five. As we hit create, an account has been created. Let's have a look in the database, see what happened if we leak this out. And if we leak this out, this is what it looks like. Where is it? It's actually at the bottom. A, one, two, three, and the password is null. And also the account is null. This is what it looks like. And one thing I just realized, and you have to be really careful with that when you're in, in, uh, in JavaScript. Uh, here we have a dot then, which means that the hash password, whatever happens in here, does not happen immediately. So unless we wait for this by saying, for example, wait for this to be done, then continue with the code flow. This is not going to work because we're going to be using hash password down here, but it's still not set because this function happens in the future. It's a then statement. It means once you're done with this, then go ahead and come back and run that. So one of the way we can circumvent that is by actually declaring our account inside of there as well. So in here, in that code, I'm going to nest my new account, use the hash directly. So we are not going to need the hash password. 
We're not gonna need the account salt either. We're just gonna keep it here. So salt is gonna be there. And we should be pretty much good to go. We don't need the hash password here either. Yeah, and we're going to send a new account in case it works. So all of that is now part of our thing. Okay, with this new code, let's have a look. It says, await is only valid in a sync function. Okay, so here we're going to say, boop, boop, boop. Are we able to say a sync hash like so? I think we are. Yep, so that's gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and clear up the console. npm run dev and let's go ahead and run this code here. So going back to what I wanted to say earlier, I, I went ahead and I wanted to um, show you something. So to show you clearly what goes on, I'm going to remove all the accounts. So I'm dropping the table completely. As we do that, we're going to go create a new account, say 1N123. The password is going to be 12345. Let's hit the create account. Create has been um, done. So technically, we should have an account in there. Hopefully this time with the information we want. And here it is. That is the password and the salt is something else. So we can't understand any of that. And as I've mentioned, this is a one way operation. So taking this string you can't go back to having the one, two, three, four, five. And this ring right here was generated using the salt. So yes, we have the one, two, three, four, five, which is our password. But with the one, two, three, four, five, you can't just recreate that. On top of having the one, two, three, four, five, you also need to have the random uh, salt over here because it was used, this this algorithm here, uh, sorry, this, uh, this string over here was generated using the 12345 plus the unique salt for all account, which as you might see over here, if we go back and we create another account and this time the password doesn't change, right? But we're going to say 124, create a new account, account has been created. If we go back inside of here, and I want you to be really careful about this, right? You have to understand this concept. The password, not the password, but the, the string over here is different. As you can see, the initial here stays the same, but as soon as we get into the actual content, F A N W and down here is Q S, you know, it's completely different. And that's because we generated a unique salt. So over here, this salt is different. Why is this important? Well, if you leak, for some reason, you, you leak your password database and you're using the same salt for everybody, or you're not using a salt at all. Well, you can actually test against a list of passwords, run the algorithm to uh, encrypt with Aragon, and then you can get matches. If you run the algorithm on the one, two, three, four, five, and you get this string, then you know, hey, this is it. Um, and if somehow you have the salt mechanic on top of it, so you say, well, okay, well, all my passwords are going to be salt with a unique uh, code, and that code is leaked at one point it's leaked for all the other accounts as well. So it's important that you generate a random salt for every single unique account. That being said, we are, we are um, much more secure now because we're no longer keeping that in plain text. However, we still need to be able to read that, right? <laughs> because you, know, you have to be able to log into that. And how do we log into that? Well, and now we're going to move on to the login in which over here I've stripped the code inside of here. I've been uh, messing around with it just uh, for the last 10 minutes or so because I had a problem that uh, I learned. So I learned something while making this video and it was uh, quite fun. Let me explain to you what I just learned. So as we are doing this right now, we're saving all this information inside of the, the database. That's fine. We have this. Um, I've learned that at the beginning of the argon string, we actually have the salt in there. And my question was, as I go through, as I go through um, verifying the password, how do I incorporate the salt in there? Do I just rehash the same thing and see if the answer match? And that didn't work for some reason. I didn't really dig deeper into that, but I found out um, that the salt is actually included at the beginning of the argon string over here, maybe even to that extent. I'm not exactly sure how big it is, but because I can't write the, I can't read the byte array from here, but hey, let's go ahead and let's, let's create this piece of code. So to verify the password, if we found a user account, we have to use argon2, 
dot verify. The first parameter is the encoded string, so that's what you're that is what you're gonna find on the user account dot password, and the password uh, is actually the plain text password of here. So we verify with that, and what is it exactly we do after that? We do a dot then. So again dot then, and we're gonna have a boolean that lets you know if you connected or not. So let's call this success. So with the success. We're going to fire that into another function that will be ran a little bit later on once we're done validating. So, okay, um, we have to remove this for sure from there so we can put it inside of here. And we're going to parse the success. So if success is equal to true, then we do this else. We do that. Okay. So that is the invalid credential. What do we do exactly if we are if we have valid credential? I believe we're just sending it back. We could also save in the last login. That's what we used to do back back then. So let's go ahead and include that. Uh, we're gonna say user account dot last authentication is equal to new date. Or I believe you can do date dot now if I'm not mistaken. And we're gonna say user account. Await user account dot save and send back the full user account as a response. That's another flaw we're going to fix a little bit later on, but right now that's going to work. Let's give it a try. See if this piece of code also works for the login now. So I have my code running. Await is only valid in a async function. All right, let's turn that into a sync. There we go. And now we're listening. Let's try to log in. And it says welcome one two three, so we managed to do it. But I'm I'm just want to test out if see if everything is fine. I'm gonna enter the wrong password and it says invalid password. All right, so that's one big step that we've done. Also, why for some reason I don't get to have the create button back? Let's go ahead and fix that. Sorry, sometimes I go fast on these and I don't see that. Uh, yeah, here it is. I probably done it for the create. Yep. But uh, yeah, so the most important part is done we no longer keep plain text password in our database and that is very 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 important that we actually go through that so it was a bit more complex of course we have to integrate another hashing uh, package that was a little bit hard to understand even for me I learned something today so I'm quite happy about that but it's the most important step and I'm glad that we've taken it to hide the password All right, so the next thing we're going to tackle is the response. When we send back a response to our client, we want to be limiting the amount of information there is for the sole purpose that if somebody is listening on your network, uh, be it a man in the middle, well, first you want to have a HTTPS connection, but on top of that, you want to limit the amount of information you're sending back to the client because if you don't need it, why send it back? You're just exposing information to the client that he's not going to need. So here, all my responses, especially the one with the user account here, I send the full user account back, which is kind of bad because we said that, um, you know, we want to hide our salt as much as possible. But, you know, uh, yeah, so we're not, we don't want to be sending the whole thing back. Also, this includes the password. Um, and what I want to be doing right now is actually create a, a response. So some sort of response code that I'm, I'm going to be using in Unity. So let's go ahead and create some sort of structure we're going to be using and I will be creating an object that I'll call response and um, that response is going to be an object like this It's going to have a code code could be zero for the moment and uh, we could also have a message uh, zero would mean no problem or something like that success right <laughs> that makes more sense and that response is going to change uh, depending on what we actually say so right here we have the invalid credential what I'm going to do is I'm going to say response.code is going to be equal to maybe one, right? One could be the invalid credential as long as it matches on the other side and we're totally fine. Um, the message, the response.message could be invalid credential. And I'm looking to send this object instead of just sending the string. So here, this now becomes response. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and go somewhere else. So roughly here for, well, first, let me replace what we have down here. Invalid credential, same thing. I don't want to be uh, changing the code here either because I don't want to tell the person that he has reached an account, for example. Um, right here, when we do the user account, we just send the whole account. So here is what we'll do for the moment. 
we're going to say response code, response message, and response.data is going to be equal to the user account. At the moment, it's going to be that, and I'm going to change it in a few. But basically, I'm setting a code. This is a success, so I'm going to say zero, and I'm going to say account found. Okay, you'll see why we're doing that in a bit. Um, I want to take this message and basically do the same thing for the create. So I'm going to go down here and let's say, you know what, our response, we're going to empty it at the beginning. I don't want to see, um, yeah, I don't want to have a default message here that might be sent for some reason. So I'm going to add an empty that, go back to the create. And here we have invalid credential. You know what, let's go ahead and copy this, this code here. Now here it changes a little bit because we have a username is already taken. So now we have another code that I'm going to put two in there. I'm going to say username is already taken. And what else did we do? We're roughly around here. We also need to send the account. So I'm going to go ahead and take the piece of code we had prior for the account sending, which is right here. Could be account found code is zero and we send the user account. Okay. So why did I do that exactly? The reason I've done that is so I can uh, first mainstream, not mainstream, but put the response into a specific box and say the response can only be that. And if you receive anything else that does not contain a code or that does not contain a message, just don't care about it. Not only that, but now I am sending a code and with that code, I can act on behalf of, um, of my Unity client without having to output the string. So one of the fear that I had um, prior, and it's a fear that might not be based on anything because I do web and when I do web, you know, you don't, you don't write information that you receive in the query uh, because you might receive like, for example, a malicious code. And if you just want to output that on the screen, it might run something. Um, so the worry I have is if we are just to output the message we receive in, in, um, from the server. So for example, if we receive a message right here of account found, what if somebody fakes a response and instead of typing in account found, he runs some C sharp code over here, which I know makes no sense because we're in unity, but for some reason, I don't want to put information in there. I want to make sure that whatever is put on the screen is, is something I define on the unity side, which is why I've defined code over here. And here is what is going to happen. Now going inside of unity, I have the login over here, but I'm also going to create two new class. So those classes are going to be roughly around here. I'll call this one login response. And you probably guessed it. The other one is create response. And maybe you want to put this specific uh, nomenclature over here just to say that those are responses. Um, and what I want to do is make sure I first get rid of mono behavior. I make this class serializable. Why? Because I'm going to be using JSON with it and just remove everything from here and say public int code, public string message MSG, just so it matches the object. And also here, I would also like to get the game account data, but this one, hmm, we have to make it serializable as well. So system dot serializable. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, um, login response, game account. We just need the create response now. So same thing. Actually, you know, let me just copy that. This is the create response code message and public game account. Um, how was it called in? How was it called in the object when we sent the game account data? So in this case, data. Right. Same thing for this side. So. It's the same, it's the same structure, but the reason I split them in two different, um, here in two different things is because, so while it is the same data structure, the, the code might be different based on, on the uh, login response or create response. So one could be invalid credential, but two is uh, username is already taken in this case, and could be something else for, for username. So with that in mind, I can now go and every time I write the alert text, not that I've done that before, but you know, something that could have been easy to do here is just change the alert text for the response of the query. So I don't want to do that. Oh, see, I do it over here. So technically that could have been a, 
that could have been a really bad thing if somehow Unity was able to run code from outside. So let's go ahead and apply what we've just made. And the reason I've made those two class is so we can deserialize them with JSON. So going over here on the text request, I'm first, um, I'm going to create a response. So I'll call it variable. Actually, you know what? This is the login. Is that the login or the create? This is the login. I'm going to say login response. I'll call it response is going to be equal to JSON utility from JSON. And the string we receive is basically a JSON string. I haven't shown that for the sole purpose that I haven't, but um, you know, when we put an object earlier, we've put an object through here in the response, we basically receive the, the JSON version of that. So if we were to just debug the log the text, we'll do it at the same time so you guys can see. It's just a JSON object. So debug.log and we'll use the, where is it? The request dot text let's also put it here we need to we need it to build basically and uh, yeah it's gonna look like that now with that response I can say the following so if response dot code is equal equal to zero because zero is a success over here the game account actually we are not going to need that anymore because first I want to remove that because it might be a, uh, a security flaw we're gonna say welcome and then the following, we're going to take the response dot data, which is a, uh, how do you say? This is a game account. If the admin flag is one, let's go ahead and ban admin. And if not, let's just not do it. So same thing as before, we just strip the name in the middle. And that's part of the thing. So you don't want to be putting stuff on the screen that is uh, not sanitized and basically might be unsafe to deserialize. So a way to actually put the username on the screen right now would be to create it from the string. So basically, well, hmm. here's what I'm thinking. Because it goes through the JSON utility, it then creates the game account. And as it creates a game account, it constricts it within the string. So technically, what goes in here would be a string. And we can make sure to sanitize that string, string when it comes in. And of course, if the string is clean, then we can go ahead and put it on the screen. But as I'm going to say, this is just like paranoia talk maybe there's no way to run remote code in unity just by doing this but you know what i'm just not gonna do it for the sole purpose that in, in the web it's a really bad practice so let's go let's go ahead and keep it like that here let's make sure it's uh yeah you know what i'm talking about okay so over here um we got the invalid credential here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a switch statement um hmm yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do a switch statement on the response.code and if the response.code is, for example, if it's case one, which means that is the invalid credential error, we're going to go ahead and do this and then just break. And uh, we only have one error case in this one uh, for the login. But what we can do is if somebody's trying to corrupt our data and for some reason there is no response code, we can say default alert text.txt corruption detected blah 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 something like that and you know what close off all the buttons don't allow this person to use our application anymore it's gonna it's for sure gonna yeah whatever okay so uh that's if we get a response if we don't get a response error connecting to the server is fine this is you know this comes internally one two three one two three which is an existing account then this is the data we receive at the moment it's a big chunk of data as you can see it has the ID, username, password. Of course, the password is hidden right now. It's hidden with the salt, so it's a little bit less secure, but it's still there. Um, hidden. And if I am to change it to something else, uh, for example, if I do the wrong password, hit login, and it just says invalid credential, code one. And you will also have a message for messaging purposes, but um, I don't trust those messages, which is why we still type it in. We could easily just say, hey, you know what? This is response.message, but it would be exactly what I'm trying to avoid right now. Okay, so that should be it for now. There's a, I think there's a, a condition that we're not doing right now because I keep freezing this application. So yeah, if I type in a username that is not found, I am not getting any response back. So let's see. Oh, over here. So if the account is not null, we do something. And if it's null, then we just go nowhere right now, which is not, not really good. Um, so what exactly would we like to do in this case? We want to be sending the same exact message as down here. So here, let's take all of that. 
and do a else statement. If we don't find an account, we're just going to say invalid credential, same message as over here. Okay. Let's give this a try. One, two, three, four is not an existing account and it says invalid credential. So we're pretty much done now with the login. Let's go back and do the, the response for the create. So that's the login. Going down to the create, we are of course doing our request and then roughly around here, I'm gonna be copy pasting the code we have. So this one over here. Oh, and we can remove the debug now that we see exactly what the response is like. So going in my request, we're going to say if the response for the create, so create response, change it here as well. If that response dot code is equal equal to zero, then account has been created. So that's good. We can remove that awful logic here that if we just make a typo in our backend. So that's very good to remove that, get rid of that, make the code a little bit cleaner. So if response code is zero, then we can go ahead and this game account over here. Well, this game account, um, boom, 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 we don't need it. We just don't need it. Uh, and then we can do a switch statement. So switch, do a response.code. Actually, yeah, we don't need because it's the code is zero here. We don't need to do a switch statement. We can just say, account has been created okay and here we have to do a switch statement username is already taken is that the only response no we got also invalid credential do we have invalid credential so i thought we had like two of those response in the create yeah invalid credential is up here yeah okay so that that also works so um going back in my unity client we're going to do response.code and for the code response, in case it's one, one was invalid credential, invalid credentials, we can then break this off. Case number two was username is already taken and you see the whole purpose, I'm going to repeat it again. The whole purpose of doing this is so we control what goes inside of here. And technically you could put that in a enum as long as you write it on the client side and it's part of your application. Uh, then the only way to change it, if it's part of your application in the, uh, in the static part of your application, then um, the only way to change it would be through memory editing. And if the person is memory editing, then you know he's changing his file locally so that you can't do anything about. Uh, and then finally we can take the corruption detected in case this happens. Were we playing around with the buttons here? I think so. So we're going to go ahead and just turn off or turn on all the button in case there's an error and turn them all off in case it is. No, actually, we want to keep them on all the time. Yeah. Oh, which is why we have that roughly around here. Okay. So error connecting to the server stays the same. Yeah, let's use this one <laughs> down there. So it'll be cleaner. Um, this error stays the same. Everything else stays the same. So I think we're pretty much good to go now. And with that in mind, the security flaw that we have uh, taken care of during this small session is the one about putting stuff on the screen that is and might not be safe to deserialize. So we've done that. We created a response code, a response object um, and we cleaned up a little bit of the code. So quite happy about that. Let's try and sign in and see what happens. Welcome. Okay. Awesome. Going to do that for creating an account now. So one, two, three, four. Account has been created. We're signed in. Amazing. All right. So that's going to be it for this one. In the next one, we're going to go and reduce the amount of information that is inside of the response. Oh, it's going to be a fairly simple one after that. Cheers. All right, welcome back. The next one is quite an easy one. It's about reducing the amount of information we send over to our client from the server. So pretty much the information we're sending right now is a code, a message, and data. Data is the weird part here because data contains a full user account object, and we definitely don't want to do that. 
This concept needs to be applied at two different places. The first one is when we communicate with the database. Now do note that every time that we make a call to the database, what happens is that we go outside the internet, we go outside outside our own computer to reach a database, even as the server. So this is like a third server somewhere. You have yourself, you have your server, and then you have the database which is hosted somewhere else. And um, information is is sensitive, right? So when you take that information, that sensitive information, and you put it through the road, so it reaches another server, for example, another computer, then you're putting that information at risk. So initially, what we need to do is limit the amount of information that we share in between the server and the database. There is no there is no client in between that, but still we need to limit that amount of information. Plus, it's going to go, um, it's going to be good on the bandwidth. So how do we do that? Well, let's have a look. What can we have? Like what can we send here? When we receive the object back, we have to send the username because we need to match it. So when we do a find one, we're finding it through the username. Do we have to send the password? We actually have to send the password because when we send the password, um, you know, the, when we send the password, well, we need to make sure it's the same password. So we have to verify with that. We actually don't need to send the salt because the salt is integrated somewhere in there. So that, that we're fine. Um, last authentication, not an information that we currently use. So therefore, we don't need to send it, which means that we're left with two things, username, password, and that's it. So let's make sure we only receive that. So going over here, in all the find one statement we do about this, we are going to use what they call a projection. And those projection is just a string. We need the username and we also need the password. That's it, that's actually it. Now let's have a look, do we need anything else here? We're gonna be looking for one Oh, this is for the login. So when we find the login, we take only the username and the password. That's totally fine. And if the user account is not null, then we go ahead and we um, we use the password. So here we need it. And you know what? We don't even need to get the username back. So just the password should be fine in this case. Yeah, so just the password should be fine. We only receive the password so we can test it against uh, the current string that we have in, in the plain text version in Unity. So that's going to be good. Um, and now for the create. When we go over to create, do we need to find anything? Well, technically down here we are using nothing actually. If I remember correctly, yeah, username is already taken, so we're not using anything here. Therefore, I'm just going to send in the ID just to say that, yo, there's something that exists, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, or you know what, since the username is being sent, I'm going to send back the username because this one is already compromised at that point. Um, okay, that would make sense to me. Let's give this a try, see if everything still works. Oh, actually, you know what, before we, we try this out, I would like to go, for example, and log in over here and just do a console.log on the user account. I'd like to see what goes through the wire over here. So remember, this is only um, from the database to the server. And now we're signed in and the information we receive is the following. So, okay, so by default, we receive the ID from Mongoose. Oh, my face is over at my bad here. By default, the uh, ID is being sent either way, and now we just receive the password. And since we're doing a login request, we have to compare it with that. And do know this is only on the server. The client doesn't know about that just yet. Speaking of, now we have to talk about the client. When we send that data, that response back, um, we need to send in some information, right? And that information must not be the password. However, he might need some more information. So let's go over to the front end and in the front end, we still need to retrieve a couple of things. Let's do username and admin flag. Why? Because those are the things that I was using in my previous logic, which would mean that I have to go back here. And actually, at that point, since I'm going to need to transfer that information back to my client, I have to go ahead and add it to, um, to the source, right? So the source is a database. I have to tell the database, hey, I'm going to need these two information because I need to pass that over to my client. So username and admin flag is what I was using before. If you'd like to send the display name of your character, if you'd like to send his wood cutting level, whatever it is, it would be right here. So 
Now this information is not compromised, but now it's part of the transport in between the server and um, the database. It is now stored under a user account, and if we just send it that way, then we get a problem, because if we just send in that way, uh, we, we basically send in the password as well. The game only needs to know about the username and the admin flag, so we're going to have to wrap this data over here into something else. And I'm curious if we're able to actually deconstruct that, so I'm going to try something here. Username and admin flag. If that works, I'm going to be quite happy. And from this side over here, I did get the password, I did get the username, um, that's, that's good, that's exactly what I needed. But on the Unity side, as I just tested this out, I got the username and the password plus the last authentication, which is fine because the last authentication is actually being set. Um, it was set after, roughly around here, so that's why I received it. So this notion over here did not work. So how do I go about deconstructing this object? And what I like the most about doing this video is that I get to learn a lot of things. So I found a one-liner on the internet that looks a little bit like this and um, it takes in my object. So that's going to be my user account. And here apparently I give it key one and key two. Those are, are going to be stored in, um, those are going to be de deconstructed from user account and they're going to be put in the new array, which is what I want over here. So let's do, I needed the username and I needed, what else did I need? The admin flag and nothing else in this case. So I don't even send the um, last authentication in this case. So I'm limiting the amount of information to two in that specific case. And let's see the server is running. Yep, that's really fine. Let's try and log in. Account found, data, and that's it. So only username. Why only username? Because this object in MongoDB does not have a admin flag, which is perfect. That's exactly exactly what we needed, actually. Uh, since there was no object, I did not get anything back. So now we just filtered our response. And as you can see earlier, we were sending the password back to the client for no reason, right? The login has been accepted. The authentication has been done on the server side. We did not need to actually do that um, on the client side. So all I'm sending is, hey, you know, you successfully, you successfully logged in. Here is information that the, your game requires to run and nothing else. The least information that you put through the wire, the better it is. Okay, let's go ahead and do that for the create. I'm going to reuse this useful one-liner that I just found. Go down here where it says data. What do I need to send? Well, we, we concluded that over here, um, we were just going to send, actually, we did not need to send anything, right? So at the top of there, let's just do underscore ID because underscore ID is being sent no matter what. So from the database to the server, we're going to receive no information whatsoever because that other account over here, this check basically is there to check if there's any collision. That's not even your account. Why would I receive information from an account that is not even mine? Our goal here is to check whether or not it's null. And if it's null, then we can go ahead and create ours. And if it's not, the username is already taken. And, you know, in that case, we don't even send data back. With a good reason, right? You don't want to send more information that, you know, you don't want to put the information of somebody else you don't know um, through the wire. Going down here, what do we send back? So here we create a new account. We have the information. So we create a new account. We save it. And then when we send it back, so let's take this new account. The information we're going to send in here is just... What do we need? Well, the username would be just fine, right? So just a username and we can say, congratulations, you've created your account and do the username response, assuming that we sanitize this because I am a freak. Okay. And uh, just like that, I think we're pretty much good. Well, let's go ahead and take this request handler debug.log. Let's put it inside of the create, see what is our response when we do create an account. Uh, and just to make sure here, I'm not using anything else. I have the response code. That's totally fine. Okay, cool. Let's give this a try. Create. And all I'm receiving is the username back, which of course is there as well in the client. Good. That's going to wrap it up for this flaw. Cheers. All right, guys, our final security flaw we're going to be addressing today in this video is um, rejects. Actually, we're going to make sure our password is safe enough. Right now, the only check we have for our password is actually not even here. 
it's not even on on the um, the server side it's only on the client side and the only check we do is is this beyond three character and is this in between 24 which is a really bad check so instead of having all of this here we're going to be using rejects to test out if our password has um, a certain security to it so we can say hey we require at least one lowercase and also one uppercase or maybe even a special character so to do that we're going to be using something called a rejects rejects is a, a Perl utility that helps you test out if a string meets a certain requirement um, and I'm gonna go online and actually grab a rejects that could be quite useful for us so over here on this website that I found on safe password rejects Google search it's a website called section.io and it gives you a rejects what we're interested in over here is um, po -po -po, you can read the whole documentation is a string that looks actually like that and with that you can actually test out um, a string see if it matches a certain pattern so here I'm just gonna copy that go in my browser find the find a regex online for example and we're going to paste it here at the top that is my regex and it's gonna let you know whether or not your string down here actually finds a match right now there's no match because here it says I can't read all of that properly I think this is it needs at least one uh, lowercase character it needs at least one uppercase character it needs at least one number and then it needs at least I don't know what this is exactly but it has also to be it also has to be minimum eight characters so let's try this out right so we're gonna say one a b c c c c c c c c c and it doesn't seem to work am I missing something I'm missing a special character of course and here we find two matches why two I'm not quite sure and here it finds one match okay yeah okay so it finds a whole match over here because this whole thing is is legit um, beneath a character it shouldn't work so let's see oh I'm gonna remove another C over here it finds no match so that returns us false so in order to have a safe password we can keep all of that and if you're not interested in having that much stuff uh, in there I totally understand sometimes it's it's not cool to have all of that and it's really annoying for example the special character you can remove that completely I believe by doing this and let's let's write out something so B A B A B A B A no match oh two matches here oh because now I have a number okay so I was missing the number part but as you can see this now returns us a match we remove the special character and I'm gonna be using this string actually so I'm gonna force user to have at least a capital letter at least a uh, lowercase letter and also a number within their password I also am going to force the fact that they need a minimum of eight character we can lower that to six maybe sometimes I don't know it's up to you really but you know what let's keep it to eight for more security but screw the special character okay let's go ahead and take this string this is what we want and we're going to store it inside of our create over here and um, hmm one thing that I'm looking at over here maybe we should also implement it in the login because if our username actually if our password doesn't meet that we can just return invalid credential like right off the get-go here if it finds nothing it doesn't even need to go and ping the database so that's what we'll do yeah all right so I'm gonna go at the very top of my script and declare myself a const um, password password rejects and say this is a new reg expression and we're gonna send in the information so I believe this string is gonna do the job over here um, I made sure to include the slash GM and also the slash at the beginning because if you don't do that then you don't it's not gonna work so basically make sure you include the slash here and also GM you can just hit copy that's gonna help you out quite a lot as you can see um, and also those are actually parameters that you can send in for example you can say hey this is going to be insensitive as well but don't do that because of course we're looking for both um, lowercase and uppercase character that being said once we have our regex here at the top we're gonna take it and put it in front of our password roughly around here and I'm gonna say um, I think it's called test so password reject dot test put it in here and if it's a match then yay if it's not a match so exclamation mark in, in front of it I'm gonna say it's invalid credential and just for the sake of testing you don't do that of course I'm gonna change the code and see if we get a corruption of data if we get a corruption of data it would mean that it works so let's do login 
corruption detected that's perfect so i could even enter the same password as before corruption is going to be detected because i go through this flow over here because my password is unsafe therefore nobody could have this password and i'm totally avoiding this part here where i ping the database uh, through my return so quite happy about that um yeah it means that all the account we've created needs to migrate to a better password uh, not our problem the game is not live but of course if you plan on doing that in the middle of your development process and you already have user account you have to reset their password to something uh, okay so password reject test password is good so we got it to work around here do we need it anywhere else i don't think so so if our password is not safe that's just a login so we're to we're totally fine here yeah okay that's good now going down here under the account that create this is where we're actually going to use this for real so at the beginning at the top here here is what i'll be doing i'll actually remove the section where the password is null completely because i'm going to be checking that somewhere else um let's do if the password is null invalid credential totally fine with that um we, we're going to do a length check on this one however so we're going to say if username is equal equal to null or our username dot length gth is if it's smaller than four so actually no if it's smaller than three or our username dot length is bigger than 24 then we're going to say invalid credential I actually, um, I don't want to say the following. I don't necessarily want to say what is the minimum amount of character needed, and I don't want to say what is the maximum. It's a, it's something that you have to decide if you share this information or not. It's just like the rejects we're going to be talking about in a bit. Um, what I'm going to say to the user, if they don't input a password that is safe in, enough, I'm not going to tell them, hey, you need this, this, and this to have a safe password. I am going to just tell them that it's not safe enough because if you release your password pattern basically if you release your your password rejects the condition that you need people to go through to have the password like how many characters it needs to be or it needs to have a, a lowercase or uppercase letter by releasing that you give a filter to people who are going to brute force your application i thought I was not mute for a second i almost panicked okay <laughs> Um, so you don't want to tell them exactly, hey, this is exactly the condition you need to meet for your password because then they can lower down their, their attack, you know, their list of, uh, of username they can use and password they can use on you by quite a lot. Okay, so having that said here, I'm just going to keep saying, hey, those are invalid credential. It's actually here. It's an invalid username, but I'm not going to tell them. I'm just going to say it's invalid credential. Um, and I'm going to go down here and say our password and we're going to do the test. So how did we do the test exactly? We said password reject dot test and we're going to test that if it's not true so if we don't pass the test then we enter this if statement and i'm actually going to return a code over here so we have code one we have code two for username taken here i'm going to use code three and i'm going to say on safe password send back the response and then go back home i think we're pretty much good with that yep so i think we're good with that um having that said we now need to parse this new message so i'm going to go on the client side go over to my response for um here for create and now i'm going to create a new case so case number three and if we reach case number three it would mean that password is unsafe I'm not telling them, oh, you need to have a capital letter and oh, you need to have a lowercase and an uppercase character. I don't want to tell any of that. Just leave it as is. And let's give it a try. Let's go ahead and create our account. I'm going to say, hey, that's my account. That's not mine. Cool. My password is password12345. Create. Password is unsafe. Okay. Why is that? Okay. I'm going to add a capital letter now. A. Password is still unsafe. Okay, am I missing something? I'm actually thinking I'm missing something. Okay, so it turns out that um, boom, 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 I was outputting what I had earlier for my rejects and also my password. That's my password. That's my rejects. 
it would automatically add the slash in front of it. So what I did to fix this problem is I just removed it. Um, so what I said earlier about adding the slash, not gonna work if you're gonna do it this way for some reason, I'm not quite sure, but you know, uh, the important part is that we tested it out and now it works with this specific rejects over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it one more try and say unsafe password. Create password is unsafe and and that works. Okay, so if I am to create a safe password now, let's call it B H J and I was alternating the um, the capital letter and not account has been created, username, blah blah blah. Everything seems to be working just fine. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here on the login side. If I change the login, invalid credential, if I type in something fair. Oh, well, you don't see the delay because it's on the client side, but basically it should go through the right flow. Okay. All right. So that's good. Okay. At this point, we have um, rejects check on the server. That's the most important part because that's the one that interacts with your database. Uh, however, we don't want to do redundant call to the server if we don't need to. So what we're going to do just to make things a little bit more efficient, we're also going to implement the same exact logic inside the client. So if we can actually avoid calling the client, we're going to do it. So over here, when we do our try login, as you can see, we already do something about that, right? So we already check whether or not um, the username has a certain length. And if it doesn't, then we break, we don't even do a request to the server. And that's what that's where I'm going. Basically, I want to do the same exact thing, but on the client side, and if the password is not safe enough, don't even bother sending it to the server it's not going to work, right? So let's just stop it right here for the client as well. Which takes me to Google because I don't know how to do that in Unity, but hey, Unity has a regular expression ca um, class called rejects apparently, and we can call it with my string and also the rejects right here. I believe that that would be it. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and try this one out. So I'm going to be removing completely the password part because inside the rejects, you actually get to have a minimum amount of character uh, so that's good. And I'm going to say, you know, our password over here, wait, no, it was called rejects, right? So rejects, it is from system.txt regular expression, expression. So let's make sure we include that here at the top. And let's say match our string input is the password. So password and the pattern, the pattern is the following this one. Let's take this and put it as a const field as well. So we're going to do boop, 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 private const string password rejects since it's a, it's a constant. What I like to do in unity when it's a constant is just put it in all caps, uh, whoop, rejects like so, and we need the following part. Okay. Hopefully we don't need to have the, uh, the starting and the end of the character over here, but in case we do, we're going to come back and add it. So let's go ahead and do copy that, put it down here. And what does it say? Oh, instead of using match, we're going to use is match because match is actually returning you which part of the string actually matches that and is match just returns you a Boolean, just like uh, the one we saw inside of JavaScript, uh, our JavaScript code. So is that enough? They're expecting another. Oh, yeah, they do. They're expecting that. That's totally fine. Um, and here we can say alert.txt. Um, do I want to put invalid username? Oh, sorry, invalid password or invalid credentials. I could actually do that here. So invalid, no, hmm. Invalid credentials is going to be the way to go. So let's use that. Alert.txt, invalid credential. And as we did earlier, we yelled break, so we avoid actually sending that. Now do note, this is a try login, and just to test it out, I'm gonna put some random number here, uh, see if we actually go through this condition. So here, if we're not getting a match, then we're gonna go inside of this condition. A very clean way to test, I know, I know, thank you. Doing my best here. Invalid credential through the password check, right? So we got invalid credential before hitting the server. That's next level. Now let's try and add some secure stuff to it. So uh, lowercase, uppercase should still not be good because we don't have eight characters. Let's try more character 
and I just remove one of the uppercase, whatever. Okay. And then it says invalid credential if I have a safe password. So over here, that's a safe password, including a lowercase, uppercase, and a number with a minimum of eight characters. Pretty good. All right. Uh, one thing that we haven't, I just realized that we, we didn't put a limit. Let's put a limit to 24 over here. Um, and I can just add it to my rejects here at the top. Also, let's make sure we add it to our rejects inside of uh, JavaScript. And we're good to go. Okay. Our final step will be to take this, copy it over. Oh, actually remove that weird statement. Copy it over to the create. And we are going to be good to go. All right. Looking pretty good, actually looking quite better than one, uh, the, the one we had last episode. So really happy about all of that. It's much more secure. We do less stupid thing, basically. There, there could be improved, like security can always be improved to some extent. You can always remove um, usability. You can always make the life of the user more painful and increase the security. So that's something you could do. For example, when I decide not to show what is um, the requirement for the password when I say, hey, you know, it's just an unsafe password and I don't tell you why, I'm increasing the security of my application at the cost of my user experience. So it's a balance you have to do. Um, and if I think quickly about things we could do to improve this application on, on something that would um, not impact the user, would be, for example, do a a, a time, not a time, but a, uh, a lockout, right? So if you're trying to log into an account and it's been 10 different times you're trying a password, I want to lock that person's IP. I'm not gonna do it for here, okay? I'm, I mean, I think we're pretty good for the moment. This could technically be brute force, so it would be a good practice to do it, but I just, I'm not experienced enough, I'll be frank with that. Um, but one thing that you could do if you wanna go ahead and make this a little bit safer, is do a timeout mechanic. So um, maybe you would take the IP of the person on the client side, and if that IP requests to log in more than 10 times in an hour, then you go ahead and you lock that IP. You don't allow him to do any more requests. And uh, by doing that, it's gonna force the hacker to get a list of proxy if he wants to keep going, and proxies are expensive, so you're actually putting a dent in his, uh, in his effort. So quite glad that we got this out of the way. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you stick through the whole thing, you're you're amazing. And um, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit of something at least. And with that, I am going to wrap up my day. It's getting quite dark. So thank you so much for watching once again. And I'll see you very, very soon. Cheers.